Hello everybody and welcome back to Cats Monthly Movies, a monthly show where we talk about every movie I've seen this month. I'm Cat and I'm joined by QJ. It's May! Did you just scream your name in the middle of my sentence there? Was that what you... No, I said it's May. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think oh, so. it's about QJ. April. It's April. I you said. <laughs> yeah, also it's April, so <laughs> What a good start. What a good opening. Love it. Um, so this month, I haven't actually had that much- QJ! Okay, that, that time you actually did do it, didn't you? Well, okay. I've had a huge amount of time to actually watch anything, really, because I got, about midway through the month, I got really bogged down with coursework, but I did my best. I watched yeah. a few movies. So, in fact, I watched Let's 10 movies, about so it's more than I thought I did. Three of them are, like, all in one, pretty much. Anyway, so we started off, start of the month, I watched, um... Two of the Lilo and Stitch straight to DVT uh, sequel movies, because nice. <laughs> Actually, have you seen? Wait, these? so um, Stitch has a glitch, and um, oh, the one that came before it was okay. I'm just gonna wait. I've got the title. Well, it was here. the I'm one where they. You can work it out. Oh, I see. I didn't. The first straight to DVD one, I didn't see, like, right away. Or I only saw it once. I can't remember what it was called. But it was the one with with where they introduced all his other like yep. six hundred and twenty five uh, cousins, and Sparky was around, and they chased him, and they were gonna like find homes for everyone. How will I just talk about the movie? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is a good point. Yeah, okay, today uh, QJ is gonna discuss all of the movies that I saw in yeah. this month. I know it's called Stitch the Movie. Uh, that's the first one that I watched because it's. The first one that okay. was released, but not That's the first one the chronologically, because Lilo and Stitch lore is really surprisingly overcomplicated. <laughs> <laughs> Stitch the movie takes place after Lilo and Stitch, but also after Lilo and Stitch 2, Stitch has a glitch, which came out after. It's really annoying. But anyway, so yeah, Stitch the movie is the one that sets oh, up yeah. the animated series. It's fine. It's not that good. It's kind of like... It's, it's like Yeah, I didn't think it was that great. It's clearly a straight-to-DVD sequel. The animation's a bit off. It feels a little bit off. Like, Lilo's barely in it. Like, she's barely a yeah. character, and her whole personality just isn't there. So it's kind of like, eh, this is just okay. Like, I really enjoyed... Like, Hamster Wheel as a villain is great. Like, <laughs> that dude's just funny. And you I really like... I really um, like Experiment 625, the sandwich guy. Like, he's just the best. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, I, I, like, he's a good guy. He's 625. And, um, yeah, it, 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 was, it was decent, but it wasn't, like, it wasn't, like, anywhere near as good as the original. Yeah, so. it was low budget, too, from what I remember. Yeah. Because I remember watching it and thinking, like, that the animation was not as smooth yeah. Or, like, pretty yeah. as Lilo and Stitch. Um, and, yeah, there wasn't as much heart or personality yeah. in any of the characters. It was kind of like they were trying to take a yokai approach and make it a little, like, hey, let's have a way to, like, bring in all these other <laughs> funky animal-like characters and have them all have special powers, and then we'll chase them around, and it'll be a good time. I like how you went for the yokai reference instead of the everyone will get it Pokemon reference. You could have just said, "Oh, they were trying to make it like Pokemon and just well, have that, a bunch of wacky characters." Because you know what, Pokemon are yokai. Yeah, so I know, but like no one knows trying yokai. To be more Stop trying to make yokai a thing. Yokai is not a thing. <laughs> Let me be. What do you mean, yokai is not a thing? Were you not listening to our last episode? <laughs> no, I don't actually listen to this show. <sighs> I don't listen to your episodes anyway. Um. They're trash. No, just kidding. I have to because <laughs> I edit them. Anyway, so yeah, then I watched um, Lilo and Stitch 2. Stitch has a glitch. This was like first day of the month. So like, honestly, a lot of this I I don't hugely remember because it was a while ago. But um, I remember this one being way better. I like it felt more way like better. a Lilo and Stitch movie. Like, because Lilo was a prominent character and there were the... Oh yeah, because it was the two arcs that kind of wedged together really nicely. Um. Like, they split off and then they come back and they tie together, like, because Lilo is trying to yeah. win that dance competition and Stitch is basically slowly dying. <laughs> yeah, and he's trying dark. to, like, be a good Stitch, but yeah. because he's, like, his, like, metabolism or whatever is flipping out. Yeah. He's like, ah, oh, I'm bad, and Lilo's like, you're ruining everything, and then they fight, and then yeah. they come together at the end because they need each other, and they're family, and it's beautiful. Yeah. Because Ohana means family, and family means no one gets left behind. No one gets left behind. 
<laughs> um, forgotten. But yeah, this one also takes place before Stitch the movie, so none of the like additional like cousins are introduced. Like it's all just simple. Like it's just straight after the first film. Yeah. It feels like an actual sequel. It feels like it, it all sequences up properly and it all makes sense. I remember liking that movie. It, it, it yeah, it, it's good. It's 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 the best of the two. I haven't watched the third movie because we didn't have time. And I said I'd watch the whole anime. Wait, is there first. a third straight to DVD mm-hmm. one? It's It basically apparently is like a big season finale for the show where everything kind of like concludes, I guess. But oh, I haven't seen it, so I don't interesting. know. Who knows? Um, yeah, I I loved the animated series. I, like I each episode was it. a different cousin. Yeah, I like I, like, I watched. Wait, did you watch? Did watched, you watch the show? All the little episodes. I watched a few episodes, but the only version I could find online was really low quality. So I just and it was like slightly out of sync. Yeah. So I just got really frustrated. Like I was enjoying it, but I was just like, I can't handle like mm-hmm. a slight desync, and it just was driving me insane. So I had to stop. But yeah, I was enjoying. Like if I could find a it high was, quality version, it was fun I though. Totally watch it because yeah, I, I mean it was it. very. Very youthful Disney Channel. Like mm. every episode had a little moral, and it was like, "Let's find a home for all these little freaks." And yeah. it, yay! <laughs> and the sandwich guy but was there. I had fun with it. Yeah, <laughs> I love that guy. <laughs> He's honestly might be my favorite character in the whole Lilo and Stitch universe. He's just the best because I love the idea of a character that just like has so much power but cannot be bothered to use it. Like it's so good. Yeah, because don't don't we relate to that yeah, as I know. humans? As human beings, we have look so at much all power. the things I could accomplish. No, I'm just gonna eat food. Yeah, and just watch sandwiches. TV. <laughs> yeah, I love it. He's a he's just a good character. It's, I love him. So then, I moved on from Lilo and Stitch to watch a movie that, um, I would describe QJ, and you could probably work out the title from this description. I would describe it <laughs> as the ghost of a good film hidden away in the shell of a bad one. <laughs> is it Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? Heroes in a Half Shell? Tell- no, because that is a good film. <laughs> no, oh. it- Ghost in the Shell? Um, I feel like you're the- goofing me. And- Wait. What? Wait, What? what is that? It was like, did you- have you seriously not? There was so much like advertising for it. Ghost in the Shell? Yeah. Scarlet Wait, was that the new anime that, that, that came yeah. out? Or a, a remake I can't, of an anime you're or something? Me right now. I can't actually tell. No, I just I couldn't remember. <laughs> this is the sort of proof I'd pull on you. So now I'm like, is she? What's she doing? No, Ghost in the Shell was that, that like remake anime people yeah, no, talking yeah. about, right? It it was. Yeah, you gotta remember, I don't like see movie advertisements anywhere, uh, and I okay. don't watch trailers on YouTube. So like when movies come out, I'm like completely in the dark. <laughs> okay, I shall give you some context then. So Ghost in the Shell was an old anime that people like for some reason, because I don't know, people like anime whatever, about <laughs> robots or whatever in the future and they made a live action movie with Scarlett Johansson that looks really good. It's it's visually, like the it's got really good visual design but it's shot in this really boring way that like, it, it's, it's really interesting because I, I just, I knew everything looked good but the way it was directed was so boring that even though there was so much interesting visual design going on i was just sitting there like i can't enjoy this because it's just shot like a generic 2002 action movie and i just hate this um the plot line is just the most dull contrived i hate all the characters i can't connect to any of these people i I can't follow this i just i can't i I, I, honestly i think i was more bored in this film than Hmm. I was about to say than any film I've seen this year, but no, Silence came out this year. I don't think that's possible, but I was very bored in this film. <laughs> I just, I wanted to leave. Even the cool, like, visual design couldn't save it. Like, I just couldn't handle what I was watching. I was really just bored, because that that's all I can the really say thing, about this film. The only thing I know about that film is I remember that a lot of American people... Mm-hmm. Um, were really upset that they didn't pick a Japanese woman to play the main character. Yeah. But then a lot of Japanese people were like, yeah, Scarlett Johansson did a great job. Like, she was awesome. Hooray. And so everyone's um, just like, chill out. I don't think it, it matters <laughs> because it's a bad movie. I, I, don't, I mean, I think that was that was the point of whatever video I was watching is yeah. like people were like, like, I don't know, maybe I'll get a lot of flack for this, but people are like, ah, racial diversity, like put the actual, like, person they're portraying like pick a person of that race to play them 
But then yeah. people of that actual nationality are like, just pick a person who's going to be a good actor. Like, it does. I mean, maybe sometimes it matters and other times it doesn't, but like, I don't know. Well, I don't, are... I don't know the original anime, <laughs> and I, to be honest, was so bored it. in this film that I don't remember it that well. But if I remember correctly, in the film, they gave a reason for why she was a white person. And I don't know if they, I don't know if they made that up for the sake of this film or if it was the case in the anime. But they made like it was like because she was a robot, they crafted her to be like. And I, this sounds like, like they they made the perfect person. And in doing that, the robotics so like company, a very plain yeah had made beautiful. her like the most boring it's generic like simple, attractive like just generic attractive looking woman and. That is yeah, Scarlett which Johansson's Scarlett face. Johansson is. Yeah, so like she's very traditionally beautiful. Like I feel, and, and again, I could be butchering this because it's been a while since I watched this film, um, and I have, I went nocturnal for a bit, so my entire brain has kind of been scrambled over the past couple of weeks. So <laughs> I don't trust anything I say. But if I remember rightly, that that they tried to explain it. So, I mean, maybe it would have been better if they had, but maybe the original anime explained it. Like I don't know. So who knows? Yeah. Or cares. And to be fair, every time I watch an anime, like none of the characters ever look like any race. Yeah, like they I'm look like sure animes. Japanese people don't have pink and blue hair, and like and like huge you know, eyes. No one has anime eyes. eyes. No race and, like, has that. They all have like pasty, milky, pale skin. Like no one is. I don't know. <laughs> I feel like anime characters are their own specific race of people. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, it's 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 a weird one because I feel like there is a case to be made on both sides, but I honestly do not care at all about the Ghost in the Shell. That I just am not bothered. Cast whoever you want to cast. It's just who cares. This it's reminds me. I just want to like yes. Say a quick word about um. I can't remember what anime is coming out in live action. It's, it's like Death Note or yeah, something. Yeah, the And there's, there. um, Willem Dafoe's there's one character that's being played by a black guy. Yeah. And everyone's like, that character's not black! And I'm like, so what? Yeah, colorblind casting, dude. Like, Unless it matters to yeah, the character. Yeah, like he's probably... Matter. Yeah, unless, I mean, if it's a character that goes around being like, oh, I love being white, I'm a white person, <laughs> and they pick a black guy to play him, like, that <laughs> might be a little confusing... Yeah, or, but like if if it's not like, a significant pick the best character, character to play him, don't do it. Don't, who cares? It doesn't matter. Right. Like people are like, I'm not racist, but that character is not black, and I'm like, maybe maybe he could be. Yeah. Maybe the people who drew the original anime totally could have made that character with dark skin. Yeah. And it absolutely wouldn't have changed his character at all. Yeah. So they can do that for an adaptation. Yeah. It just doesn't like the color of a character's blah, skin, blah, blah. unless it's significant to their arc and to their personality. Like, obviously, if you've got a character whose entire purpose in the story is that they grew up in a black family and had to deal with racism their whole yeah. life, you recast that as Asian. they white people to play the guy like, in in Moonlight yeah. or in Hidden Figures, that probably wouldn't have gone over yeah. very well. Yeah, you, you've got to do heavy rewrites. I mean, you could, you could take... Like, a, a black character who's dealt with racial issues and recast them as a different like as asian and rewrite it a little bit but it would still be a bit weird but yeah it, i mean obviously you don't recast that character as white because that would be completely stupid <laughs> but yeah like just cast characters however you want as long as it doesn't make the character weird i don't get yeah. it <laughs> anyway good mini rant good mini rant good conversation why do we always end up on weird mm -hmm. like meaningful I don't know. race conversations in my episodes. <laughs> Why does this happen? I feel like this happens more often than it should. Because you subconsciously are incredibly racist with the movies you choose to watch. What? No. I watched Moonlight. Yeah. I hated it. Yeah, but I mean, damn, actually. Yeah, no. and you hated it. You hated it. <laughs> because, <laughs> no. because you are racist towards towards nighttime and you prefer the sunlight. What? <laughs> what? That, oh, no. I'm actually thinking about it, because I hate anime too. <laughs> Wait, no, I need you to go through my list. Is anime, there anything, is the there anime that, race. Is there anything that disproves this? No, I love Lion, and Lion is about an Indian child. I'm not racist, and I yeah, love but Get you Out. Grew up with Australian nope. parents, and I love Get Out. And um, Australia about, is basically nope. the same as England because <laughs> you talk the same. <laughs> hey, I enjoyed an anime this month, so you can. 
Shut up. Let's talk about no, it. Not until the end. I do it chronologically. You know that. Okay. Well, then let's move on. <laughs> I might have to cut that whole bit. <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't want to look racist. I'm not racist. <laughs> anyway, so the next movie that I watched was a film that entirely. Oh no! Wait, no. There's there's one there's one black guy. I was about to say entirely has white people, and I hated it. But it doesn't. <laughs> No, it's mostly white people, and I hated it. But it's the film Free Fire, which is a concept that would be a really good... It's a really interesting case, actually, because Free Fire would make a really good 10 to 20 minute short film. But as 190 minutes, it's like the worst thing. Because basically it's it's a film that takes place over the course of one event, right? It's... they, They go into a warehouse to do a gun deal, and it goes south, and the entire film is just this, um really long, painfully drawn out gunfight where there's it goes from like one second like just loads of things are happening, people are getting shot, and then it settles down and there's this long series of like them just yelling at each other across this warehouse. And there's no time cuts. Like it's all just one long sequence, if you know what I mean. Like there's no ten mm. minutes later they're still here. It's just Wait, like like Birdman. Isn't Birdman all done in one... Like, it's not all done in one shot. Birdman's all done in one shot. No, not like Birdman, then. Um, like... Okay. But similar concept. Like, it, it, it cuts, and it's all shot, but it's... um, th- There's no time... They don't play with time at all. Like, everything you see is what's happening chronologically. So it doesn't skip mm. anything. It's just okay. one 190 minute... Not 190 minutes. 100... No, 90 minutes. <laughs> I got confused with time there for a second. I forgot that time works in base 60. I don't know what happened. Anyway, (laughs) so yeah, it's basically just 90 minutes of exactly what this event entailed. Just one long chronological sequence. So it's just like watching, like following someone's life around for a little bit? Like you don't get any breaks? Yeah, there's no breaks. There's no the next day. It's just one event. Dang, 190 minutes would have been way worse. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, it's, it's interesting because... There are some really good moments, and there are some really funny jokes, and I think if they played up the comedy a bit more, they might have got away with it, but it's like, the really good jokes are so few and far between, that there are so there's such long periods where you're just like, I just, I'm so bored, I just, what's happening here? And I sat, I was really confused, like, I, when it ended, I was just sitting there like, I don't know what I think, because <laughs> I just, I'm, I'm just, what happened? What was that? I, I like, it, it almost feels experimental. And it's hard to walk yeah. away from a movie, like, just being like, okay, I don't think anything. Like, I don't care. It's like, yeah. you feel like you have to have an opinion. Yeah. You're like, I don't, how do I form an opinion on that kind of thing? Well, because I was like, just... there were moments that I enjoyed, but I just, there was, there were, like, whole five to ten minute sections where I was just like, is something going to happen? And I don't, <laughs> like, are they going to do something? Is there going to be a funny line? It's strange, because it, it definitely sounds interesting not to say that it sounds good but it sounds yeah it interesting is. to experience because it's it certainly doesn't sound like any other movie that i've ever mm. heard made like it's weird and like weird doesn't always make enjoyable yeah but um in a in a strange way i can appreciate it for being yeah different same i can appreciate it for trying succeeding something new. and getting out there it might not have succeeded in the new thing it was trying but it was trying something new and I think if it had either, because it, it's in this weird middle ground of comedy and serious, so it, it, I think if it went, if it had gone further into either comedy or being serious, it would have been far better. But it's like this middle ground where I'm like, because it's a comedy and all these characters are being played for goofs, I don't really care about them, so I can't take them seriously. But because they're kind of trying to make me take them seriously, there's less jokes than there should be if it was a comedy. So it's like this weird middle ground where it's like, it's not funny enough to be a great comedy, but it's not serious enough to be a great dramatic film. So it's like this Mm -hmm. awkward, I don't care and I'm not laughing that much, so what's happening here? And I don't know, it's odd and I don't want to hate it, but I kind of hate it. And what made you watch it? I thought it was going to be good. The trailer was really well cut. Like the trailer looked really funny. Oh, it was in cinema? (laughs) Yeah. Like this this month? Yeah. Um, Okay. Okay. It was only 90 minutes, huh? Tra- the trailer just was an entertaining trailer because they'd obviously cut together the the fast-paced, funny moments and then 
not told us that there were lots and lots of really boring bits in between. So like you said, it would have made a, a short, yeah. a good short film. It would have been an amazing 20-minute sort of, sort of like, short concept. Um, take, taking a short uh, story mm -hmm. or really good book and making three really long movies out of it <laughs> when you could have taken out all the fluff and making <laughs> one really nice movie out of it. Are you desperately reaching that, for that, that Hobbit like? reference right there? <laughs> is that what you're we doing? We had a really long um, warm-up conversation co before we started recording yeah. about um, the Hobbit films because um, I'm reading, I'm, I might be reading a certain book that I'll be talking about uh, on our next episode, but uh, we'll get we'll get back to that another time. But, yeah. <laughs> Teasers, get out, yes. get back to your episodes. What are you doing, encroaching on mine yeah. with your little? Your little teasers. I'm sorry. I don't come into yours and be like, hey, I'm going to watch Lilo and Stitch movies in my episode. Get ready. You do come into mine and you're like, I've watched anime and I'm going to talk about it too. And I secretly like anime and I'm going to talk about all the anime that, that you've watched. I don't think that's ever happened ever at all. I've never liked an anime in my life. I think you're making that up. You are a liar. <laughs> Speaking of liars. anime, though, I watched an anime, um, really good anime called The Boss Baby. <laughs> oh, you thought oh, you, you thought I was going somewhere for realsies, but I goofed you hard. Oh my right gosh! There, just tell I? me about the stupid Alec Baldwin baby movie. To be fair, okay, the boss oh, baby I is hate, actually I hate babies. It's actually really good. Like comedically, <sighs> it's on point. It's hilarious. Okay. I had a lot of like really That's good laughs because you know how DreamWorks specifically Pixar will do it as well, but not as much. But DreamWorks will often do jokes that are for the adults in the audience for the parents, right? Yes. This movie had a lot of them, and they were really overt. Like, they weren't just, like, subtle background gags. They were, like, the punchline. And I'm sitting there like, children are not understanding this joke. But it's just, <laughs> this is the main gag in this scene. What? Like, it's it's amazing to me. Like, there's this... That's funny. There's this scene where, like, the, the two kid characters get in a limo to get a lift. And, like, it's just, like... Like, the, one of the kids leaves with this glass, and he's like... People from Long Island don't know how to make real iced tea, and he throws it away, and it's like, I'm sorry, was that a <laughs> child alcohol reference? What? <laughs> it's so, like, th there's, like, a whole bunch of those strewn throughout the movie, and it's like, what? It's beautiful, but I, I don't understand. What? <laughs> Who's the target audience for this? Okay. It's beautiful. Um, I'm, now I'm a little interested. Yeah, and at the same time, there's... That, that makes sense with... Yeah. Um... With Alec Baldwin being the main mm. guy, because he he seems like the type of comedian that wouldn't just be like, okay, you know, I'm here to be a name yeah. to sell tickets. He'd be like, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna make this my movie, yeah, and like be funny in the way that I am funny because he's a funny dude. Yeah, it kind of feels like what Mike Myers did with uh, Shrek, just kind of like he he made mm -hmm. the character with his own sort of personality, and I like that. I appreciate it. Yeah. Um. And it, but yeah, it's, it's a very well written movie. It's very well animated. Like the visual style is so. It's so DreamWorks, because they're very good at doing, like, very expressive faces. And the baby character has such a, like, ridiculously expressive face. Like, so many gags that use his dumb facial expression when he's, like... One second he's, like, grinning at the other kid, and then the parents look, and he just goes into this dumb baby face. It just... It's comedically good, because it's, like, just this quick <laughs> subversion, and it, it's, it's funny physically. Um, they do these really good segments where they cut into 2D animation from 3D, um represent like the kids imagination oh, cool. and it works really well it's like really seamless and it's a great I like that use stuff. of 2d yeah um i really do appreciate the animation team behind dreamworks films yes. even if i don't like a lot of the stories in the films like the animation is always yeah it, like really they are great. just on point because i think the thing that dreamworks do incredibly well to differentiate themselves from disney and pixar is they do things very expressively and they do things very colorfully like everything looks like a cartoon as opposed to the kind of more realistic I know I'm saying like a movie about toys or whatever is realistic, but it, compared to what DreamWorks do, a lot of Pixar movies are far more realistically rendered, even if they're about it, abstract concepts. It does kind of make sense to say that it's like, you like more cartoonish. Yeah. Because like in in a way, um, like the Toy Story movies are very realistic mm. because you can tell which toys are made of plastic and which toys yeah. are made of felt and which toys are made of you know, whatever. Yeah, and they move and how they should move. The people are made of like skin and hair and yeah. the cars are made of c car material um, <laughs> metal me me metal metal that's what cars are made metal of and tires. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah dreamworks like they're beautiful but in a 
Yeah. Very different way. Like, I don't feel like I could reach out and touch, yeah. like, things in a, a DreamWorks film, but but they're cool to look at. Yeah. Very like, shiny. And the way they move a lot of the time, like, the way the animation moves and the motion of things in a DreamWorks film, it, it kind of feels more like a, an old Bugs Bunny cartoon. Like, things are goofy, and you, you could totally imagine a DreamWorks character pulling out a giant mallet and hitting someone with it, whereas in Pixar, you kind of be like, wait, what? You know? Yeah. It, it's that kind yeah. of, like, the motions that they go through are far more cartoony. And you can, like, when a DreamWorks character falls 50 feet down a cliff and, like, lands and is fine, but they've left an imprint on the floor, you're kind of like, yeah, that would happen. Whereas if Pixar did it, you'd be like, I'm sorry, Pixar, how, yeah. how does physics work in your world? Because everything's kind of more realistic. But I think that's it. why I hated Monsters University, because I think movies like Monsters University were m more cartoonish than yeah. Pixar should have been. Yes, I think that's the problem people had with The Good Dinosaur as well. I wouldn't know because I haven't seen it because I don't watch trash movies, but, you know, like... Also, wow, it's... you just made a judgment about something that you haven't seen. <laughs> it's also... I thought we agreed we weren't going to do it's that. It's also one of the problems I have with Brave. Like, because in Brave, the mum turns into a realistic bear and then the babies turn into dumb teddy bears. And I'm like, I'm sorry, Pixar, how does this work? Your universes normally have consistency to them. If this was DreamWorks, I'd be like, yeah, fine. That's a good point. This is Pixar, so I expect higher standards. Thank you very much. Don't do this. <laughs> and it just annoyed me. Yeah. Like, it's just inconsistencies. Whereas in DreamWorks movies, you're like, oh, inconsistencies, who cares, whatever. Like, the end of Boss Baby, going back to this, is really stupid. Like, you're just like, wait, what? Because it implies that it all <laughs> happened in the kid's imagination, not the baby, the other kid. But then didn't happen in his imagination but did it and you're just like uh, what i i'm very confused by this whole thing and it, it deals with this really interesting this really cool message of like like what it's like to deal with suddenly getting a younger sibling and kind of coping with that and learning to love them and that's the whole arc of the film and that's what he goes through and it's really cool like i i really enjoyed it like i thought it was good i've never experienced that because i'm the younger sibling but it's kind of something that you're like everyone kind of has that idea and you kind of know what it's like to suddenly have someone that you're competing for love. Does he try with. to kill him? Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't remember any attempted murder scenes. Because that would have been a really Actually, uh, no, he does dark attempt. interpretation. He does on... attempt to kill him. Now that I think about it, because I'm pretty oh. sure he tries to fire him out of a window in a catapult at one point. <laughs> that's a that's a, a really dark but cartoonish um, like representation yeah. of real life situations. <laughs> Yeah, like in a Pixar movie, you wouldn't see that because, like, you know, in a right. Pixar movie, a character wouldn't survive that. But in a DreamWorks movie, you're like, oh, he'd just fall out the window and it'd be funny. So whatever. Yeah, I think that's that's another problem, though, I have with with DreamWorks films mm. is that kind of comedy doesn't always come across. Yeah, no, I can for see me, that. Because I'll watch a scene like that and just be like, oh, no, they'd be dead. <laughs> that's stupid. <laughs> KJ demands realism from her cartoons, everyone. Yes, I do. Oh, man. So, moving onwards, I then... Okay, so I set off on an adventure to attempt to watch as many Fast and the Furious movies as I possibly oh, could. Yeah. How many do you think I got I through, PJ? How many do you think? Um, There's eight, just out of... Just so you know. Four. Four. Now, everyone pause the video. Leave me a comment saying how many you think I got through. Um, the answer will yeah, surprise you. <laughs> It was one. I only. I um, just. I, I one. just. Now, I have seen one Fast and Furious film, mm -hmm. but I can't remember if the one I saw was a sequel or if it was the first one. Okay, here's the problem with the Fast now, and the Furious movies. I'm just going to pause you right there. I'm going to look up the list of the titles. The titles! These should be in chronologically confused. I'm going to read them out for you real quick because they're stupid and it really annoys me. Okay, so it goes. The first yeah. one is The Fast and the Furious, right? That makes sense. The second one is Too Fast, mm -hmm. Too Furious. Too Fast, Too which, Furious. Again, it's it's fine. Then The Fast and the Furious, Tokyo Drift. The Furious, Ditch Tokyo Drift. Ditch the number system, thanks. Okay, well, now we've got subtitles. The fourth one, Fast and Furious. With an ampersand instead of the word and. So you've just confused everyone there. Is this a reboot? Wait, really? That's the only difference? No, there's... It's the Fast and the Furious, and then just Fast and Furious. And then the fourth one yeah. is Fast Ampersand Furious. Yes. Um, oh, that's, but that's the stupidest but one. But I'm pretty sure it's not a reboot, which is great. No, it's... Uh, yep. <laughs> and then it goes Fast Five. All right, number five. Fast Five, but not the number five. Fast Five. five. It's written five. 
Then Fast and Furious uh. 6 with an ampersand and the number 6, not the word 6. Then just Furious 7. So you've gone Fast 5, Furious 7 with Fast and Furious 6 in the middle. And the Furious 7, that's the number 7, not the not the word 7. So they've just screwed it oh. again. The last one is called, in America, it's called um, The Fate of the Furious because it's the eighth one, the eight of the Furious, but it's not spelled F A. It's S F A T E. So it's like that pun is a bit of a stretch. In in the UK, it's called uh. F eight, the fast. Uh, I think it's called yeah. It's something stupid, but it not. It's no. There's no consistency to that entire naming sequence. It's so dumb. Why would wow. you name the fourth film Fast and Furious? It's like did what? <laughs> yeah, and then the sixth one should be called Fast Ampersand Furious Two. Yeah, like. The Fast and the Furious, the sixth film. Yeah. Like, because is, it just, there's no uh, consistency at all. Uh, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And then the seven would be Fast Fast Five Furious 2 with a seven instead of a five. <laughs> I don't know. No, it doesn't make any sense. Cause there's... Why, why would you go from spelling a number to using a digit? I don't know. The fourth one should have been called Too Fast, Too Furious because there's two I know, two, right? twos in there. <laughs> I know. It's so dumb. <laughs> I love the fact that the third one is just The Fast and the Furious with a subtitle and they never do a subtitle again. <laughs> never again do they do a subtitle. And then the eighth one uh. it, in America doesn't have the le- the number uh, the number eight at all. It, it's just The Fate of the Furious. Which implies that it's the last one, but it blatantly isn't, because they're doing more. I mean, if they were trying to imply that you don't have to watch them in order, and they're all just, just their own films, that'd be totally fine. But, I'm pretty but sure then you, you shouldn't number any of them. From the trailer of the eighth one, I'm pretty sure you do, because there's characters that get introduced. And the, the trailer of the eighth one implies that you need to know who The Rock's character is in order to understand what's going on. As far as I can tell, and I've watched that trailer a bunch of times, because it played before just everything. <laughs> anyway, the point is... <laughs> I didn't watch any of the more of them. I watched the first one. And it's fine. It's an adequate movie, to be fair. Like, it, it if if I'd watched it, like, when I was, like, 15, I probably would have absolutely loved it and wanted to watch all of them. Because, I don't know, it's it's a fun, violent Yeah, see, I think I also movie. watched it when I was, like, 15. Mm-hmm. And I was like, this is cool. Like, there were a couple funny moments. I don't think I was that enthralled with it because I've never really liked, yeah. you know, like, fast cars and Nor explosions I. and... I don't even know if we've watched the same movie. Like, I don't know which one I watched. Okay, so... My, the one I saw had Vin Diesel in yeah. it, and they were, like, racing, yeah. car, and there was another okay, guy. This doesn't really help. And there was Vin a girl Diesel was liked. in it, and they were racing. <laughs> That's the whole franchise, Monami. I don't, wait, is he, in, is he in all of them? I don't know. I don't know. He might not be. I don't, I don't know. I assume he is, though. Which ones are Paul Walker in? Paul Walker is in the first one. That's the one I saw. He's got real 19... 19- okay, see, I don't know what he looks like, so... He's got real so... 2001 haircut, like... He's got, like, frosted tips and everything. It's pretty hype. I remember he liked eating tuna sandwiches. Yeah. That's all. He went to the cafe because the girl he liked made tuna sandwiches. And she was like, it's rubbish okay. tuna. And he was like, no, I like this tuna. But he was obviously lying. Yeah, yeah. okay. I think we've seen the same one. If, it, if that's familiar to you, then we've, seen that, we've both seen the first one. <laughs> I can't believe yeah, <laughs> this movie about cars and being fast and being furious. We just... we. Make the connection based on a tuna sandwich. Unless, of course, every film starts with Paul Walker eating tuna sandwiches. <laughs> eating a tuna sandwich? And if it does, that's amazing. But I really doubt that it is. And I'm not going to watch all of them to find out. So I will never watch another Fast and Furious movie ever again. I wanted to because the, the eighth one looks the fun. tuna sandwich hunt. And I like The Rock. And I wanted to see The Rock punch some dudes. But it's not worth watching the entire franchise to see The Rock punching dudes. I can just watch that in... WWE highlights on YouTube, so I'm fine. <laughs> yeah, it's. I mean, it's fine. It's an adequate movie. It, it they go fast. They're pretty furious. It, the plotline's a bit ridiculous. Like, because I don't know who I'm supposed to root for in that film. Because Vin Diesel seems like he's like the protagonist. He's like the cool guy, but at the same time, he's a criminal. And Paul Walker's a cop. And I'm like, should I be rooting for Paul Walker? But Paul Walker's kind of a douche. But like. So is Vin Diesel. Yeah, I think that's the, that's the crux of like, the film. Is like, ooh, who's uh, the good guy? Good guys aren't always the good guy. I yeah, but it's and not presented in like a they're not a clever. They're not fast way enough. To... Or furious <laughs> enough. <laughs> oh, but it's. I mean, it's fine. I just, it's just an odd little two thousand. Yeah. It's so two thousand and one though. Like, <laughs> like street racing, Paul Walker's haircut, like everything about it is just the most two thousand and one film 
I think it, it did kind of look like a Backstreet Boy. Yeah, like, <laughs> and all of the like rap tracks in the background. It's like this is just oh, it's so two thousand and one. I love it. Two thousand one was a good year for movies. You know what else came out in two thousand and one that's really good? What Shrek? Moving on, I watched cool. three movies in one series because I. I'd literally just handed in my coursework. I was just so tired and I needed something to just... Because I was basically, I was nocturnal and I needed to reset my sleep schedule mm-hmm. by staying awake. And I needed something funny and stupid. So I started watching... I don't know how you can focus on new things when you're trying to, like, zone out. Like, I just watch, like, repeat episodes of a show I've already seen ten times. When I tell you the the like... new thing I was watching, I think you'll get why I was able to focus on it when okay. I was super tired. Because I was watching the Jackass movies. Um, which oh, all right. don't really require a huge amount of focus. Because it's just... There's no premise you need. I actually really enjoyed all three of them. I had a lot of fun. The first one is kind of hit and miss. There, some of the skits are like, eh, this is kind of not funny. But some of the skits are absolutely hilarious. Like, there's one skit in the first one where um, they're driving around on like those golf buggies over like ramps and stuff and it's just for some reason that visual was making me laugh out loud so hard um but yeah I, I just watching idiots do stupid things i just find that hilarious there's no context needed there's just i do think it's interesting that they took like the time and budget mm-hmm. to make films out of those and not just like hey we could do this for 10 minutes and put it on youtube and get a bunch of views well this was pre and like those movies made money didn't yeah. they uh, the first one, I believe, had uh, a budget oh. of five million and made eighty million or something like that. It, they made a lot of nice. money. Like all of those dudes are rich as hell now, because <laughs> they, they it's such a low budget. Even pre YouTube though, they could have they could have put it like somewhere. They did. Like I, I remember they, they did a series. There were websites where I just like watch stupid videos and. Because originally Jackass was an MTV series, so they did twenty minute episodes for three seasons, and I then see. they did movies out of it. Um, and I I think it works as a movie because. It's just like, hey, I'm just going to sit for an hour and a half and watch idiots do stupid things, and that's fine with me. And I nice. just, it's just funny to just zone out and watch a man sit in a toilet that's getting launched in the air and get covered in feces. That's just funny. Like, I'm all for highbrow intelligent comedy, all right. but I'm also for lowbrow dumb comedy. And I think they both work. I think that... Do each his like, own. <laughs> I th- no, I, I genuinely think that, like... High and lowbrow comedy both have an incredible value. No, I, I totally agree. I don't think that joke would make me laugh, but I, I do agree mm. with you that, yeah. I've definitely seen things where I'm just like the stupidest thing yeah. I've ever seen, and that took absolutely no effort, but I'm laughing, and I love it. Yeah, well, the interesting thing with Jackass is that it does take a lot of effort. Like, some of the setups for the stunts and some of the things that they do to themselves, you're just like, how? Mm. Like, it's a, it's a skill that they're... The only, the only one I remember is I remember them going into someone's yard and digging a big hole and they saved all the pieces of, of grass and then they like covered it with a piece of tarp and then covered it with pieces of grass. Yeah. And then the guy went on his like electric lawnmower and he was like riding around mowing his lawn and then he fell in the <laughs> hole. I don't even remember that one. That must be from the show. Cause I... And I'm just like, they probably broke his machinery <laughs> doing it's that. It's so good. Like... All of them are so stupid. Like, one of the guys is scared of snakes, so they faked a prank, and they were like, okay, you're gonna go behind this guy and punch him. But then they just made a really big fake hole behind the guy that they told the other guy to punch, and then filled it with snakes while he was in it. They just started throwing snakes at him and watched him freak out. It was hilarious. I loved it. Oh, uh, not cool. No, it's funny. So not cool. If, you hang out with, no, if you're I'm... hanging out with the jackass guys, you should just expect to be pranked at some point in your life. Like... Uh, they would, no, they would not be my friends. I am so not for, like, torturing people with their phobias. <laughs> yeah, but, like... Like, I I would not throw you in a hole and then throw down a bunch of adorable puppies to start like, <laughs> licking your face and being all like, oh, I'm a puppy, because you'd freak out, because yeah, but... you hate dogs. Okay, but here's the, here's the thing, though. The context is, this is they're, they're doing this to a guy who was going to go behind a guy and just punch him in the face for a joke. He, like, you have no sympathy for this guy, because... That, that's his job. His job is to punch yeah. people in the face when they don't expect it for the sake of comedy. Like, he, throwing him in a hole is like, whatever. You know? They, they all kind of deserve to be pranked, so they kind of get away with it. Like, there's... 
Yeah, I get There's it. a really good one where they set up this massive hand on like a spring in the doorway. So as someone comes through, they let it go and it just like slams into their entire body um, and just pushes. Oh, it's just so funny. And it's like, because it's the high five. Um, and at one point they get, they're just like, they go to one of them like, hey dude, can you just carry this soup into this room? And um, he totally falls for it and he just gets coated in soup because this hand just bodies him. And afterwards, there's just this shot of all of oh them like, rolling on the floor laughing like, I cannot believe you fell for it. Why did you think that we, we were, why would we ask you to carry the soup? <laughs> like, oh, it's so good. I like, I genuinely, unironically really enjoyed all three of these movies. I don't think they're high quality movies. I don't think that they're well made. I just think that they're funny. And I think that there is a, there is a level of skill and like talent that goes into making something like that funny but it's in no way the same talent that goes into any other form of comedy like these aren't talented yeah. comedians these aren't good writers these are idiots who are skilled in the way of just being fearless and i i honestly respect that comparing the different kinds of comedy is a very interesting yeah. thing about the world of funny mm -hmm. yeah because I've been thinking about it a lot recently, um, and I think like it, it, there's there's a line between highbrow and lowbrow, and if you mix those two styles of comedy, you can get just like the best thing. This is unrelated to Jackass; they don't do this, but like something like like Monty Python. A lot of the time, I feel mix like really intelligent comedy and really stupid comedy into like the oh, same sure. scene, and it's just this beautiful symphony of like real dumb and real fun, like real like clever, and it's. Yeah, it's beautiful. And I think Edgar Wright does it a lot with, um, Edgar Wright and Simon Pegg do it a lot with the Cornetto trilogy. Like, there's really clever yeah. jokes, and then there's really stupid jokes. And they kind of blend really well. And I think the mix of those is probably, like, the optimal com like comedic styling, for me at least. Like, I love both clever and yeah. stupid comedy, but, like, when they're both melded together... It's why I love Shrek, because Shrek has so much legitimately intelligent filmmaking within it, but also there's dumb fart jokes. And I think that's, mm -hmm. it's a great blend. Oh, yeah, and, like, so, so many people don't realize that, like, so much talent and intelligence mm -hmm. has to go into comedy, even if it is lowbrow comedy. Yeah. And it's, like, maybe it's because something is making us laugh, it, we realize that it's not necessarily deep, and because of that, it's not smart. Yeah. And that's totally not the case. Like, it takes a lot of talent yeah. to be funny. Like, whether you're a stand-up comedian mm -hmm. or, you know, a scripted actor or, you know one of the guys in Jackass. Like, some of them are actually pretty well trained. No, no, I mean, it takes a certain level of talent. Yeah, like, it's true. No, and it's, that level is not always, like, low to high. Like, it goes off of several different yeah. branches, the kind of talent that you would have to have to make someone laugh. Yeah, yeah, it, it's it's an interesting topic. Yeah. And... Comedy is, yeah. a, is a, is a crazy, is a crazy <laughs> web to try and follow. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, so, yeah, Jackass. I, I enjoyed them. I thought they were fun. I then... This morning, literally, because I had to, and I hadn't yet, so I was like, okay, gotta watch this movie. I watched Spirited Away, a movie suggested to me by Josh, and <gasps> only Josh. No one else has ever told me. It's really weird. Like, it's a pretty good movie, and no, no one else has ever told me to watch it. it, until Josh did, and I appreciate <laughs> that. So thanks, Josh, for telling me to watch Spirited Away. It's it's pretty good, Um, and I appreciate it. No you. one else in your life even likes that movie. No, no one else has ever said that I should watch that movie, ever. It's not happened. Never! Never. Not for <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Have you seen this movie? I don't. I don't know. I, you've never mentioned it, so I just assume that you haven't. What did you? What did you think? Um, I thought it was pretty good. It was like, I mean, I enjoyed it. It was. Mm. It had some really good visual imagery in it, like the the whole no face dude. Like he was pretty spooky, and that like at first I like throughout the opening scene. Right, this is my my whole journey of the point where I went, okay, this film's good. The opening scene, I'm sitting there like, yeah. okay, these parents are stupid. This is irresponsible parenting. You guys are dumb. I hate this. This is just... Because you know when kids' things do that thing where they're like, they really represent adults as stupid so that the kids are like, yeah, adults are dumb. We're cool. I just felt like it was doing that throughout yeah. the whole opening scene. But then when like the kind of... The... Just everything hits the fan moment. That got me. The moment that hit. Because, you know, there's that scene where um, 
like the lanterns start coming on and all the spooky things yep. and then she gets back to her parents and you're like and, uh, and you're uh, like oh oh what 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 and you're just confused because her parents are now pigs mistakes have and been just made like, oh okay that got me like immediately i was into the film at that point because i'm like oh okay this is fine. Nothing's happening. <laughs> and I'm just immediately intrigued. Yeah. I want to know what's happening. I want to know what's going on with this world. And to be honest, I still don't really know what's going on with that world, but I'm fine with that. Oh, that movie is such a good story. <laughs> well, it's like humans aren't supposed to mix with the spirit world. And it's like they were they were punished for eating the spirit world. No, I got food. that, but like... Uh, and then... What? Is is it the spirit world? Are they dead? Is this a whole... What? Was it purgatory well, I mean, the whole time? Well, I mean, it's kind of like in Japanese folklore how, like, spirits do kind of blend into our world. Right. Like, like, there were river spirits and, you know, probably spirits of other, you know, entities yeah. of the earth, and they're all around. But, you know, that specific place was, right. you know, a bathhouse, so to speak, where spirits came from where they were and yeah. went there to rest. So it was like a a little bubble that I guess like only spirits were allowed to be yeah. in. And oh my gosh, I could go on and on about how deep that movie is yeah. and how much I love it's it. super cool. I really enjoyed um, it. Like it had really good world building, I thought. Like I was just immersed in yeah. everything in the world and I thought it was super cool. Did you notice that um, that was Lilo? What? Um, Chihiro, her voice, that was Lilo. Oh no, I watched it um, subtitled because on my... <laughs> Really? On my bingo card, there is a square for a subtitled movie, and I was like, I might as well take the opportunity to do this because, well, because the thing with I've noticed is that sometimes it's better to watch subtitled than dubbed, because with Grave of the Fireflies, for example, yeah. the kids like the little girl's voice, it didn't put me off that much, but it was like her voice, her English voice acting was a bit like a little bit awkward. Um, and I was just like, I feel like yeah, I'm going to enjoy this more if I read subs. And I was awake enough, like... That's interesting, though. And that's, that's like, a little bit disappointing, <laughs> just because now I know that you and I haven't had the exact same experience with Spirited Away, because I haven't seen it I've in Japanese. the original experience, so... I yeah. watched it as the so creators now, intended me to. <laughs> there's still... I don't know. Maybe there were still things that were lost in translation, though, yeah. because you had to read them don't instead know, of maybe. hearing them and understanding Japanese. That's, um... Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, I enjoyed oh, it. Oh man! I thought the only thing I love that movie the so only much. Thing I did think was that the ending was just not satisfying at all, and I think this might be an East and Western storytelling thing because it, I've, it's come up with Probably. a lot of Ghibli films. Like the way it ends is just kind of like, and if, is this a spoiler? I, who cares? It's a really old movie, whatever. But um, yeah. on screen, I guess I'll tell you when spoilers end. But he, she just goes home to a life that we. Because yeah. we never saw her life before she went to the spirit world, right? We kind of... All we knew about her was that she was moving house and she'd left all of her friends behind anyway. So it was kind of like there were no stakes for her getting back apart from her saving her parents. So I was kind of just like, yeah. yeah and I go. think the whole story was just supposed to be about her getting away from being a captive. Yeah. I Like, I guess, but... No, and it know. was about, like, the the redemption of, like, friendship and how... Like, a friend that she didn't even realize she had when she was little yeah. um, came back to rescue her and, like, would always be there for her. And it was, like, I don't know. Her home life wasn't really important. I know. I guess. Because it was. Like, I don't know. I just I just felt like there were no And it wasn't even really about stay. her parents as much as it was about her getting getting back to them, even though it was their fault that they were there. Because <laughs> they're dumb. But, I yeah, I don't know. I just, like... When when the ending when the ending of a story is and then it went back to the status quo, I feel like I need to care about the status quo. You know, like because mm. otherwise I'm just like oh just nothing really happened because the dragon guy kind of had a he got away in the end, but I I didn't really care about him as a character because the, the, there was another thing that really annoyed me is the fact that it was a love story. Um, the moment one of is the fact that what the fact that it's a love story, like the point where the spider it's, it, not, it's not really, but they kept referencing not in a romantic they kept way referencing it like oh it's love, and I'm like oh stop saying that it's love because it's not just let it be a cool friendship. What? Love doesn't have to be romantic. No, but it is it's just oh it threw me out because they do they do love each it threw other me out. as I was friends. Just like, as... These people barely know each other and it's, it's been so referenced stupid. as love. Stop it! It really annoyed me. I was just like just call it friendship then. 
is though because they care about each other because he's trying to help her out of this situation. No, I just call it friendship. That's what I'm all about. Just don't refer to it as love. Do you not? You that you know what? You just don't get it because you don't know what it's like to love your friends. No, I don't. <laughs> no, no, and you, you just. Uh, <sighs> I don't think I actually have any friends. I just I, gonna be honest with me. I have I have a lot of feelings. <laughs> <laughs> like callback doesn't work because it's to a conversation it's that another we pre -recording didn't reference. record. So thanks for that. <laughs> anyway, I thought it was a fun movie though. I like the the yeah. like I there were a lot of things I really enjoyed about it. I liked the no face guy. I thought he was cool. Like. Yeah, he's a typical Japanese monster. Is he a yokai? Like, if you see... If you... Um, no, I don't think so. Josh, can you clarify that? Like, if that? you watch I, other... I know you know more about Japanese stuff than KJ does. Like, other anime or other, like, games where there, ha where there are, like, Japanese monsters in them, they usually look oh, like Pokemon. that. Like, the, the hood with the, um, with the face, the mask yeah. that No Face had, they usually... Oh, yeah, that's cool. Is, so, so it was just a representation of a typical monster that, yeah. like, lured her... No, he didn't lure her into that world, but he was there. Yeah. And. Well, I thought he was. So, did you notice at all? He, like, he wasn't really a monster. Yeah. Like, he was just kind of confused, it seemed. Like, because in the end, he was just like, oh, I'm chill now. And it, like, you know. Yeah, he was redeemed yeah. at the end because he didn't really lure her into the life. Um, but he was there trying to, like, he was obsessed with her. He was trying to give her money. He wanted her attention. Yeah. He represents, um, uh, for lack of a better word, uh, Johns, who take advantage of um, like youth youth prostitutes ah. that are in sex trafficking, which is really what Spirited Away is an allegory too, because you have this little girl who um, has been taken away from her mm -hmm. parents and enslaved um, in a bathhouse, yep. which someone correct me if I'm wrong, but I think bathhouses in Japan can kind of be like brothels um, where, you know, or like massage parlors yeah. where they kind of hide the shifty stuff that's going on. And um, you have this, you have this woman who's running the whole thing mm -hmm. who apparently is not paying her workers very well. And she takes away Chihiro's name and gives her a different identity yep. so that she can't find herself and can't find her way back home and is going to keep her there forever to, you know, just make money and do whatever she needs. Mm -hmm. And then you have this monster here who is just lonely and confused and doesn't have anyone, and he's obsessed with this little girl, trying to give her money, wanting her attention, yeah. and all she wants to do is get back home. And then she has this friend who's trying to... Um, who's also being enslaved because he doesn't know his name anymore, yeah. and he also doesn't know how to get out, but he's trying to help her get back to her parents. These parents who suck and are irresponsible and lost their child to be kidnapped yeah. and taken to a brothel... And, like, he's he's redeemed in the end, which is, oh, no face, that is, is redeemed in the end, and, yeah. um, you know, Haku gets released and gets to go home, and it's just all about, y y you know, the journey of trying to escape, even though sometimes the attempt of escape might, might get you killed. Dude, whoa. Or might get your family killed. <laughs> because that's a reason a lot of people can't leave. Yeah. They're traffickers is because they're like if you leave you know i'll just kill your family because i know where they live wow you've like blown my mind right there like i didn't even put all that together and then you've just put ah. it together for me that's wow that's yeah. pretty good that's that's interesting it's a oh, it's such a good movie <laughs> like even without all that i think it's a beautiful story yeah, it and it has a beautiful score every time uh she tells haku his real name and um he sheds his scales and they start to fall. Mm -hmm. And the music that's playing in the background always gets me teared up. Because it's like, you did it, you saved me, and I remember you, and like, oh, I knew you were good, yay! And it's <laughs> just like the music is like, just like, cutting through my heart. Yeah. And I'm like, I love this scene, oh, the other friends. <laughs> wow, yeah, no, wow. You just, oh, I didn't, I didn't even put that together. That's, that's pretty good. I appreciate that. Good. good. <laughs> I have nothing good. to add. To be honest, my thoughts on that film are like completely just overshadowed by what you, everything you just said. I'm just like, okay, I've got nothing now. My, I have no words. <laughs> I have nothing to add past that. You've just, 
you just you just pretty much you fly I have out a of question. Yes. When she first came to um I, I can't remember his name, the the spider yeah. guy, um, who you know, isn't dealing with all the little soot sprites. Oh my god, I love who the are so sprites. adorable. Oh, so I love the little soot sprites. I love <laughs> um <laughs> Um He said about Chihiro, she's my granddaughter. Yes. Uh, did he do that in yeah. the Japanese version? Yeah. Okay, because that was never explained. And that's probably the only issue I have with the movie as far as... Like, what What's he talking about? Is he just lying? Like, does... They, they never came back to that, like, why he said that. Okay, see, so here's the thing that confused me. Had to Later on, anything. she refers to... See, I assumed he was just making that up to kind of... As a cover-up of, like, oh, she's my granddaughter to help her out. Like, you know? But mm -hmm. later on in the film, um, she refers to the old the witch woman as her grandmother. Yeah. Granny, yeah. So, now that, with all well, of um, what you've just said in mind, she... is it about abusive grandparents who have taken in the child and are threatening against the parents? Because that, that just puts a whole new level on it. Maybe. That's, that's a spooky. Like a child who has to leave abusive parents and go live with their grandparents? Yeah. Um, or something like that, like... Maybe. Because it was... Yubaba's sister, Zaniba, who she went to visit yeah. her, and then she was like, I want you to call me Granny. Mm. And then she goes back and calls Yubaba Granny, even though she's like, why are you calling me that? Yeah. Um, and she's just like, ah, oh, it's just because you're old. At least that's how I saw it. I thought it was funny. But, yeah, I, I was always hoping that that might be explained. Yeah, no, I just, but, I just assumed it was yeah. uh, him being like, here's your in, you know? Like, if I say yeah. this is my granddaughter, then they'll look after her. That's probably her right. Thing. That's what I figured was going on. But who knows? Maybe there's something deeper that we didn't get. Maybe. <laughs> or maybe not. Anyway, so next month... <gasps> that is my favourite Miyazaki film. Is it? Mine is still... Um... Actually, wait. I don't know if it is Miyazaki. It's, it's Ghibli, but mine is Grow the Fireflies. I don't know if it's Miyazaki, though. I think it's Miyazaki. That's my but... favourite, because, my God, I cried so hard. <laughs> Like, you guys aren't going to top that. I'm sorry. It's just not going to happen. <laughs> that, that film was just beautiful. But yeah, uh, Spread Away was good. I enjoyed it. I'm going to try and watch some better films next month. I'm going to try and do more of my bingo chart. I only did one this month, which is quite disappointing. I'm also going to see Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Get hyped, everyone. Get hyped. QJ, you're going to go see it. You better. I'm going to see it at I least will. three times. I'm going to see it. What uh, my first time I'm gonna see it in a normal cinema, and I'm planning on seeing it in IMAX, and I'm totally just gonna go another time just because I can, like, because <laughs> I have my because uh, I have why my not? cinema subscription thing where I pay a certain amount a month and I go infinite number of times. So I'm like, I mean, it's I, I'm gonna, I just, it's just gonna happen. I'm just gonna be sitting there one day and be like, so oh, now you see Guardians, <laughs> yes. So you checked off the square for a subtitled mm -hmm. movie, um. I also had a square for a silent movie, right? Yeah. I already filled that one, though. And you you already yes. watched one, right. And I also... Let's see. also had one for a black and already white movie. Already seen that? Which... Already done. It's done. I've got them. What did you do for the black and Safety white film? last. I did basically two silent comedies for silent film and black and white. Because I was on, like, got a it. silent comedy binge, like, last month. I, can, I can't see the chart the way it's on the screen, so... Yeah. <laughs> I just couldn't remember. Yeah, next Funny month thing. I'm going to try and scoop up a few of those because I got a lot more free time in the upcoming days. So hopefully we'll get, yeah, some more highbrow films than Jackass. <laughs> Although I did like Jackass, yeah. so I, I have no issues. Like, I'm glad I watched them. They were, they were a lot of fun. And yeah, Guardians 2, everyone get hyped. I've, I've deliberately, it's out right now. I could have gone to see it earlier, but I've deliberately waited so that I hadn't seen it when we recorded so that I didn't talk about it before QJ had seen it. So you sh should be thankful, QJ. <laughs> I'm very thankful. Oh my god, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. It's Yay. ridiculous. It's not even... Oh my god. <laughs> anyway, so yeah. I'll do... <laughs> we'll talk to you next month, or in the middle of the month, if you listen to QJ's rubbish episodes where she talks about anime or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. Actually, we're going to talk about some Breath of the Wild, aren't we? Yes? Good? Cool? Yes, I think so. <laughs> so get excited for that. That would be good. Yay. And thank you for listening. It's been cool. Goodbye. Goodbye, everyone.